So why do so many people hate this particular engine? Many years ago, you could have gotten a mower with a Tecumseh engine on it, and if you took good care of it, it would have lasted you quite a long time. But there's just one issue. You would have been the only person on the entire block to have one. That meant you're going to be looked at in a different way when it comes to those who prefer a different engine brand. But what's wrong with this Tecumseh engine then, and does it really deserve its reputation? In today's video, we're going to look at this Toro lawn mower, and the problem is that I don't know anything about it because I just picked it up near a dumpster. Now, I've already made a video about this mower, and if you want to see that video, there should be a link to it at the top of the screen or at the end of the video. And I'm just going to use the video as a background while I talk about the poor reputation of this particular brand of engine. So over a decade ago, when I first started doing this small engine hobby, I really didn't know much about anything. But I did know about Briggs & Stratton, Honda, and of course, Kohler engine. But there was one more that didn't show up all that often, and of course, that was a Tecumseh. So my history with lawn mowers has been fairly standard, meaning aside from the mower we used on other people's lawns, the one we used on our own personal lawn wasn't all that special. So when I was a kid, they would have me mow the lawn once in a while, and I don't remember much about it. However, from what I gathered, I think it was a Murray, and it had a Briggs Classic engine on it. There wasn't anything special about it, but it pretty much set my path in life as to which engine was supposed to be on a lawn mower. Decades later, when I started my hobby, I soon realized that there were other engines that were available at the time, but they were all very scarce, and I had to wonder why that was. Now, I wish I could have told you about the first time I ran into a Tecumseh engine, but I had seen plenty of videos on them by that point, so I was very interested in working on one. Now, it was strange to me how the engine was set up with the intake and the exhaust on the same side, but I figured they had their reasons and that I should just accept it and not ask too many questions. But I did notice more about the engine that I thought was strange besides the obvious. First off, I noticed that all the mowers that had Tecumsehs on them were a lot heavier than a Briggs. I just figured that the mowing deck was the cause, but I soon realized it was the engine that was the difference. There's simply more engine in terms of metal and size to them. Now, I didn't think too much about it. I just chalked it up to design differences, but at that point, I never got a really good look at one. But once I started to research them and worked on them, I soon started to see what the differences were. The most important difference between the engine and, say, Briggs was that the Tecumseh has a pressurized oiling system to help get oil to the top bearing of the engine and not rely only on splash oiling. Now, there's nothing wrong with a good splash oiling system. Briggs has shown that it can be very reliable for a very long time, and it works even better if you perform basic maintenance to them, such as yearly oil changes. That's one of the reasons why there's a huge difference in the weight of the engines. Their designs are a lot more different than I thought, with the Tecumseh using a simple oil pump to move oil to the top of the engine, but there's more to it than just that. The sump is also designed to hold more oil than most other engines. There are also more cooling fins on the head and the block. Not only that, but the engine is even taller than most others. To be quite honest, if you had a Tecumseh engine on your mower, you basically got more engine, and I mean that in a literal sense. So what's the big deal with getting a bigger engine? Well, have you ever heard someone complain about getting more than they thought? More often, you would hear someone complaining about not getting enough, but in this case, that's definitely not the situation. So what else is different then? The other thing I like about this engine is the priming system. Unlike the Briggs, the primer is part of the carb. That means it has a better chance of working. Whereas in the Briggs, it used a separate primer that was part of the air filter base. The issue was that this remote priming system on the Briggs had a higher chance for failure or at least reduced performance since it relied on a paper gasket and also the plastic air filter base to seal properly for it to work. Now when new, they worked great, but over time, that was a different story. Now, I'm not saying the AccuPrime carb on the Tecumseh didn't have its issues later on in life, but I will say I like its design a lot better than the remote primer. Now, Tecumseh also had a few tricks when it came to the recoil system and also the ignition system, but I didn't find them to be all that interesting. So even though we have a lot of information at our disposal, I wasn't able to find the new price for a 2005 Toro with a Tecumseh engine on it versus one with the same options with just a different engine. But my guess would be that the mower with the Tecumseh was just a bit more expensive and that meant not as many of them were sold. It would make sense though if there was less demand for them. There was less opportunity to produce the parts in greater numbers and that would mean that each part for the engine might have been slightly more expensive than the same part for a different engine. Now if you were in the market back then and can remember what the prices were, I'd appreciate it if you fill us in. 
So was there another reason why more consumers would look past machines with a Tecumseh on it versus a different engine? The only thing I could guess is what basically happened to me. Simply put, I grew up using a Briggs. That means my chances are pretty good I'm going to choose a Briggs as an adult. So let's take that out of the equation then. Say I never mowed the lawn as a kid and now I'm an adult and I need to choose a mower to use on my own lawn. Which one would I choose? Now this one is going to be tough to answer because I'd have to be there to make it as accurate as possible. But after mulling it over, I'm pretty sure I know which one I'd pick and it's all based on cost. Even if there were three salespeople there and each one had five minutes to convince me to buy the engine they're representing, I simply would not pay more than I absolutely had to. Now that's difficult for me to say that because I would like to believe that I'd pay the extra 35% for the Honda, but to be honest, money does not grow on trees and that extra money could be better spent somewhere else. Besides, my view has always been that no matter which engine you choose, take care of it and it will take care of you. Now, that doesn't mean it's bulletproof. You're going to have to fix the small issues that come up, and I hate to inform you, but wishing for it to last isn't going to cut it. In general, if you keep the oil changed, use good fuel, or use bad fuel with stabilizers, it should ensure that it's going to work for at least several years. For me, though, I would want to try and keep it for at least 20 years and make the most of that money I had to spend. Now, you might think that's impossible, but from the comments I received from the viewers, it can be done. So even though I would want to buy the best mower I could, I would more than likely end up with a middle of the road mower in price and features, but at least I would know I made a call based on all the information and knowledge I had at the time. Now reading online reviews helps out, but some of them could be a bit biased. So if I didn't buy the Tecumseh engine, who would then? Based on my answer from before, more than likely it'd be the consumers who might have used them when they were younger as well. But there might have also been those who listened to the salesperson and was convinced to buy one, but it might also work in the other way as well. There might have been a salesperson there who might have steered them away from Tecumseh as well. So it may not really be a consumer choice, but one that was made by a sales associate. But why wouldn't they steer them towards the Tecumseh if they're more expensive than the other models? Wouldn't they get a higher commission from that sale? Well, it's quite possible, but they may already know that trying to steer customers towards the higher priced items is a lot more work than if they just helped them to buy what they already know. Now, I don't know that for sure, but having been a consumer for as long as I have been, I know what would happen if I got to the outdoor power equipment store. I walk in, start to look at the mowers, a salesperson walks over to me and asks me, is there something I can help you with? My answer is, I'm here to buy a lawnmower. Then they would inform me what deals they have going on right now, and then I would tell them, oh, I already know what I want to buy. And this is the point where they can either stay as a sales associate or turn into a salesperson and try to steer me in a direction they want me to go. One choice would be much easier in my mind, and the other one would be a lot more difficult. So if I came into the store and said, show me where all your Tecumseh engine stuff is located at, that would be pretty simple. But if I didn't have a real idea on what I was going to purchase, I would then ask them for their help in deciding, and who knows, they might try and sell me on something with a Tecumseh on it, or maybe even a Briggs, but it's now out of the consumer's hands and in someone else's hands. That pretty much leads me to a horrible conclusion then. I'm not really sure why someone would choose to buy a Tecumseh or pass on it. I'd have to take a poll of my closest friends and ask them, and so far the results have been very interesting. Most of them would choose to stay with what they already know, and with Briggs being a very well-known brand in the U.S., it means that not a lot of them are going to buy a Tecumseh. Basically, most choose something they're comfortable with, and with Tecumseh being so different in appearance, most simply don't choose it. They want something they know, and based on sheer popularity, Briggs wins. Now, to be quite frank, I agree with that assessment. I find Briggs engines to be easy to work on, and I can see why most find a Tecumseh a bit harder to work on. So my question is, if Tecumseh was still around today and you needed to buy a mower, and the mower you wanted came with either a Briggs or a Tecumseh, which one would you get? I hate to admit it, but I'd still get the Briggs. Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate your time here. Please feel free to ask me any questions about this project or about your own projects, and I hope to see you in the next video.